Hello, students. Welcome to Bridge Academy. Grade 9 Biology Unit to Tutorials. Before we start, please subscribe and hit the bell icon for getting notifications of all our upcoming videos. Lesson 1. Characteristics of Living Things. At the end of this section, the you will be able to state the characteristics of living things. Living things exist in many different forms and sizes. Biologists study life in various ways, such as living with wildlife, collecting fossils, or observing how fast a hummingbird's wings move. But what makes something alive? A galloping horse is clearly alive, while a moving car is not. However, movement alone does not define life, as gelatin can wiggle but is not alive. Defining life in a single sentence is difficult, but all living things share specific characteristics that distinguish them from non-living things. These characteristics help us understand what makes something truly alive. All living things are made of one or more cells. Unicellular organisms, like bacteria, consist of just one cell. Multicellular organisms, such as plants, animals, and humans, are made of many cells working together. Cells are the basic building blocks of life. All living things require energy to carry out their activities. Some organisms, called producers or autotrophs, use sunlight to create their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Plants are examples of producers. Other organisms, known as consumers or heterotrophs, cannot make their own food and must eat other organisms to gain energy. For instance, the energy in your muscles comes from the food you eat. Living things also respond to stimuli. They can sense changes in their environment, like light, sound, or temperature, and react to them. A plant bending towards sunlight is an example of responding to a stimulus. Growth is another key characteristic. Growth means an increase in size or mass, either by increasing cell size or the number of cells. Even tiny bacteria grow larger, while multicellular organisms, like humans, become more complex as their cells multiply. Reproduction is essential for living things. It allows them to create more of their own kind. Single-celled organisms, like bacteria, reproduce by dividing into two identical cells. Multicellular organisms, such as plants and animals, may reproduce sexually, combining genetic material from two parents, or asexually, producing offspring from a single parent. Excretion is another important trait. Living things produce waste, such as carbon dioxide, during chemical reactions in their cells, known as metabolism. They remove these wastes from their bodies in different ways, like exhaling carbon dioxide. All living things show ordered complexity. They are made of complex structures, starting with atoms and molecules that form cells, tissues, and organs. This level of organization is unique to living things and is more structured than the complexity found in non-living objects. Most living things maintain homeostasis, which means keeping their internal conditions stable despite changes in the external environment. For example, your body keeps a steady temperature even when it's cold outside. This stability is crucial for survival. Finally, living things have adaptations that evolve over time. Organisms interact with their environment and other living things, developing traits that help them survive. These adaptations, like a bird's wings for flying, change slowly as environments shift, allowing species to better fit their surroundings. Now let's answer some review questions. 1. What are cells and how do they relate to living things? Answer. Cells are the basic building blocks of life. All living things are made of one or more cells. Unicellular organisms, like bacteria, have one cell, while multicellular organisms, like plants and animals, have many cells. 2. How do living things use energy, and what is the difference between producers and consumers? Answer. Living things use energy for activities like moving or growing. Producers, like plants, make their own food using sunlight through photosynthesis. Consumers, like animals, eat other organisms to get energy. 3. 
What does it mean for living things to respond to stimuli? Answer, responding to stimuli means living things sense changes in their environment, like light or temperature, and react. For example, a plant grows towards sunlight, or an animal moves away from danger. 4. Why is reproduction important for living things? Answer, reproduction allows living things to create more of their own kind. Single-celled organisms divide into two, while multicellular organisms reproduce sexually or asexually to ensure their species continues. 5. What is homeostasis and why is it important for living things? Answer, homeostasis is when living things keep their internal conditions, like body temperature, stable despite external changes. It is important because it helps organisms survive and function properly in different environments. So these were some characteristics of living things. We hope you find this video helpful. If you want us to cover any specific topic in detail, then do let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.